Hughes the second.
Good evening, everybody. Hannah Mayer on piano. That's Herman Burney on bass. And Quincy Phillips on drums. Well, my name is Langston Hughes, and I'm so excited to be here today. It's a complete honor to be here at the Kennedy Center Millennium Stage. Um, it's even more of an honor uh, to be here celebrating the greatest uh, someone who not only affects me, who affects musicians all over, but I think somebody who affects the world, the great Duke Ellington. Let's give it up for him. Awesome. That first song that we did was entitled In a Mellow Tone. Uh, today we're going to be playing some songs by Duke. We're also going to be playing some songs that he didn't necessarily, uh, he didn't necessarily write, but uh, maybe popular songs that, that he performed often. Uh, this next song that we're going to do is entitled Harlem Nocturne.
York in the 1920s. It was a city teeming with life. Some had lived here for generations, but there were many newcomers, recent immigrants from the rural south and the islands of the Caribbean. For some, New York was America's first city, and that uptown community called Harlem was the heart of black America. People who came to New York carried with them their hopes, their fears, their anger. It was the period they called the Jazz Age. The Harlem Renaissance, with its literature, graphic arts, theater, and vaudeville, was alive and well. But the liveliest form of cultural expression emerged in the music called jazz. Jazz had the unique capacity for voicing the joys and expectations and reflecting the pride and the pain of the black experience in America. And more than any other city, New York in the 1920s was the citadel of jazz. So it was only natural that many ambitious young black musicians, Edward Kennedy Ellington among them, would take up the challenge of the big city. The music scene in New York was very strongly dominated by the piano players, great piano players, James P. Johnson, Willie the Lion Smith. Count Basie was one of the great piano players. There were millions of them, all great. And uh, a little terrifying, but I'm lucky. Everybody liked me. And uh, so I had no problems.
song featured the great Johnny Hodges. Uh, this next one we're going to do uh, is also a song that was uh, meant to future uh, Johnny Hodges. Uh, it's a song entitled Ishbrahan. Now, oftentimes Duke Ellington will write songs uh, that will feature his band members. You know, he will have a person in mind, a particular person that's in the band, and write the song with their kind of concept and their kind of sound uh, on the forefront. So this next song, uh, entitled Ishbrahan, uh, is a song that was made uh, for Johnny Hodges. So again, this is Ishbrahan. Thank you. 
Ellington's music was different both in its time and it's still different today in perspective because uh, it had his own personality stamped on it because it combined all the important elements of jazz, melodic, harmonic, rhythmic, and improvisational. And I think it had the best mix of composition and improvisation that anybody was able to achieve. And uh, that was part of the genius. Plus, he had a marvelous feeling for melody and a wonderful feeling for harmony. Uh, it, it all went together. Uh, many other people had done the same thing, but uh, with less degree of success. And Duke just came up with some magnificent works, orchestral works. And I think the most important thing about his music was not the fact that he wrote a lot of hit songs like Solitude or Sophisticated Lady or uh, Satin Doll, which is one of the lesser ones to me, but that he wrote so many great instrumental works for the orchestra. If nobody had ever written a single lyric to anything that Duke Ellington ever wrote, he would still be remembered as a great composer. It doesn't matter that he was a great songwriter, too. That was secondary. He always was ahead. He always kept, he didn't go backwards. He went forward all the time in writing. His music stayed ahead all the time. solid when I could hear an Ellington too. When I could see Ellington up on a podium and that those white tie and tails, I felt like I could do the same thing, you know. It was a, it was a wonderful symbol. When you worked with him, you felt good, and so did the musicians, even if they remember perhaps having had arguments with him, you know. But in they left him, but they always came back, because once you worked with Duke, you are never the same after that. When I got on the stage, in the concert hall, or wherever it was, when I started blowing the horn and playing the music, everything was right with the world. Whether I was hungry, sick, broke, or hadn't seen my family in six months or whatever, it was all right as long as I started playing that music. Duke Ellington uh, is a master in his own right and certainly deserved as much, if not more, attention. Than, than George Gershwin, and I'm afraid that he wasn't given that attention. I think that in due time, uh, the world is going to uh, find out way down the line what a great, great musician this man really and truly was. And uh, my hat's off to you, Duke, for the rest of my life and, and for the rest of eternity.
Thank you all. That's Hannah Mayer again on piano. Amazing. Herman Bernie on bass. And the great Quincy Phillips on drums. Again, my name is Langston Hughes. It's such an honor uh, uh, to have been here today to play for you all um, and to celebrate again Duke Ellington. Uh, we come to the last song tonight. Um, so we're going to play a favorite uh, and one of the most popular songs I think that Duke has, uh, has ever wrote. Uh, entitled Take the A Train. But before we play that, I just want to send a little plug. If you guys want to keep up with what's going on, uh, feel free. There's a, a card in the back of the room, and on that card, there's a QR code that you can scan. You can join my email list. I don't spam. Uh, I maybe send one thing a month. It's really, really simple, low commitment if you want to just keep up with what's happening. Also in the back, uh, there's some T-shirts if you all would like to support. Um, I'll be moving to New York next year to go to the Juilliard School. Appreciate it. But in saying that, I also need money to move to New York. So if you all want to help out to buy a t-shirt, uh, is a great way to do that. Again, there in the back, we have two different t-shirts with two different designs, just in case you don't like one of them. They're both for $20. Um, and my mom is going to be working that table. Mom, are you around? Mom right there in the back. She's walking to the table right now. I'll also be uh, hanging around a bit after the show uh, just to talk to you guys uh, by the t-shirt table. So you must buy a t-shirt in order to, to talk. <laughs> um, again, thank you so much for, for listening today, uh, and I hope you all have a great and, and restful uh, rest of the Saturday evening. Thank you. 
Thank you all. Thank you all. Have a great night. Thank you for joining us at the Millennium Stage. For more information about upcoming shows, please check out the Kennedy Center website or the Facebook page. At this time, we ask you to please head to the back of the seating area so we can safely put away our chairs. Thank you, and we hope you enjoy the rest of your evening.